Amen. May we be seated and uh, good morning, church. Bona Yesu asifiwe. I am delighted this morning to be here so that we can share the word of God. Uh, my name is Harrison Mahinda. I'm born again and Christ is Lord. And uh, today we are sharing about reforming our priorities. As you are aware by now, our new theme is reform your ways and actions and I will let you live in this place. And one of the areas that the Lord has led us to look into is our priorities. Yesterday, we had a chance to be here for a wedding and a parish minister happened to share on the same theme. And he said something that was very interesting, which I think it's worth repeating. He gave us an illustration of how we should look at our priorities. And uh, what he was trying to say is that when you dress, all of us of course dressed in the morning, there are some things that we want faster than others. Kuna vitu ambazo tulivalia mbele ya zingine. And I'm imagining what would have happened if the inner wears came after the outer wears. What would have happened if I came this morning nikiwa nimevalia tai ndani ya ama socks juu ya viatu and i think this explains what priorities are and how we should think about our priorities and jesus christ taught a very simple message which is our leading word and he said seek first the kingdom of heaven or rather seek first the kingdom and the righteous seek the first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you for your information he did not say seek the kingdom of heaven only but first that means these other things are necessary but there is what that should be should come first and when you take what should come first the last it's like wearing your socks after the shoes it is like wearing the inner clothes after the outer clothes everything is important the shoe is important it is important but there is an order in which they should follow each other em gray is a writer and he wrote what we call the common denominator of success spent his life searching for the one denominator that all successful people have and he found that it was not hard work it was not good luck it was not astute human relations and though these were important the one factor that seemed to transcend all the rest he said is putting fast things fast and my brothers and sisters this morning we need to review what our priorities are and what you put fast in your life automatically becomes your priorities our priorities reveal what is important to us rather than what we claim is important because people will claim that they honor god people will claim that they love god people will claim that for me god is first but what you prioritize that does not reveal the same thing and that is why jesus said where your treasure is 
there your heart shall be. Because your heart follows what you prioritize. Your heart follows what you treasure the most. And these things come from the commitment of the heart. And of course, the condition of our mind. And that is why earlier in this quarter, we looked at reforming our mind, reforming our attitudes. Because if these things are not right, then of course, our priorities will be very wrong. Let me do a background on this particular topic that we are doing today in connection with where we started in the book of Nehemiah. If you read the book of Nehemiah, and especially the end of it, chapter 13, we see the people of Judah who had forsaken their vows and their commitments to God, and they had drifted away against what was the will of God. And when Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem, after a number of years, he met people who had left their priorities, people who had started profaning the Sabbath. And the Bible said they had embarked on buying and selling land on the Sabbath day. And I think these brothers and sisters explain the true nature of human beings. That in many cases, we forget what is important to us. And as much as we might have gone before God to make a commitment or a vow, many are times that we drift back and back to the things that we ought not to do and forget the things that we have even vowed before God. And during the time of Nehemiah, it was so bad that the temple was closed. And the priests and those people who used to work in the temple had actually gone back to their fields to fend for themselves. Because people are no longer coming to, to, the, to the temple. There was no Sabbath worship. What they would do was business on the Sabbath day. And this is similar to us in one way or the other. When we find ourselves leaving the most important things for the other things that we think to us are priorities. So why should we set our priorities right? Our priorities determine the quality of life and dictate the actions and behaviors that we do. And it's therefore essential for us to understand and identify our priorities. When we set the priorities right, then we use our time for the intentional purposes. And this is what God created us for. We were created to worship. We were created to honor God. We were created to continue propagating the work of God in this kingdom. That should be the priority of every Christian. And I want to talk about two main priorities in the scripture. One in the Old Testament and the other one in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, priority number one is putting God first. So when God gave the Ten Commandments, which was our first reading at Mount Sinai, he thundered these words from heaven. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. And God made it so clear in this text that priority number one of a Christian or a person created by God was putting him first. Why do you think God would want us to put him first? Why would you think God would desire that we worship him above all other things? The reason is simple. That is why you and I were created. And in many cases, and in fact I'm reminded of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you'd remember, in the book of Daniel, when King Nebuchadnezzar ordered an image to be erected and demanded everyone to worship and bow down to it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, of course, refused. And I want to tell you here, my beloved, 
that today the devil has equally erected images that he's expecting us to worship. Images that could be in our minds. Images that could be in our houses. Images that could be direct in our phones. Things that we worship knowingly and unknowingly. Things that replace the place for God. It could be your business. It could be your family. It could be your job. Sometimes we take these things and tend to worship them. And by doing so, I tend to think we become proud. We forget who the Lord is. We forget why the Lord created us. Could we be worshiping such things in the place of God? Or are we worshiping God alone as he expects? You know, when, when you think about the things that and COVID has taught us a lot. If you really want or you want to show that serving God and being, you know, God is a priority for you, it is an expectation for us as Christians that we shall even honor this day, which is a Sabbath day. But even some of us to now, till now are still struggling with serving God. In fact, I was sharing with someone who told me that um, they are still not comfortable coming back to church because of COVID. And of course, uh, uh, that's very true. We need to take care of each other. But they also confirmed that they have been doing the other things that they usually do on normal days. So they go to the market, they go to the bank, and for your information, we go for barriers more than church services. Have you, have you attended a barrier lately? And you really see how people go for barriers. Eh? It is so easy for us to go for barriers than it is to come to church. If we had a wedding today, or you had a wedding for your daughter or son, or a relative, no one at that particular time would say there's COVID. Yesterday when we had a wedding, the, 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 the bridal party had actually required, requested the parish minister to even be allowed to stay without masks. Because it's a wedding. And it's important. And for your, for your, for your information, I would also not want to miss a wedding of a close friend or even a barrio. But it reveals, I told you, you don't have to tell us what your priority is. It is revealed through your actions and behavior. If God is a priority for you, let us show that indeed we value God. In fact, I was having um, a light conversation with the same person and I reminded him a song that we sing. maka <speaking> ingera. <in Hebrew> You know that song is saying that not everybody will enter. So probably there will be the same ratio that the government has given us of, is it one that? who come to church. So if you want to enter when the saints go marching, do you want to be part of those who shall be entering, who shall meet the threshold, or who shall be out? So what I was trying to tell him is that if the righteous will enter, and of course not the 100%, then be part of that group that will enter. And the same way, be part of that group which shall come to the church because, yes, we don't need to be here, all of us, because of the measures, but don't be part of that team that is going to be left out when others will enter. Hallelujah. Placing anything before God, like I said earlier, is pride. And Deuteronomy chapter 8, God kept on reminding the Israelites. Deuteronomy in Kikuyu is Goshokeri, their mother. And the reason why God had to keep reminding them is because people keep on forgetting. And Deuteronomy chapter 8 says, do not forget the Lord your God. The Lord who has led you through the wilderness. And I don't know what kind of wilderness you've been through. 
Some of us here have been through the wilderness of COVID. It has affected us right, left, and center. But the Lord has taken us through. For this reason, do not forget the Lord your God. And he says clearly in the same chapter that I made you hunger. Then I fed you with manna, which none of you knew about, to teach you that man does not live by bread alone. You know, when you are proud, sometimes something is taken away from you so that you can be taught a lesson. So that you can be reminded that you do not exist, exist because of that job. You do not exist because of that business, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. Priority number two, which is in the New Testament, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. Let me say something about this statement. Seeking first, and I had said this earlier, does not mean seek only. And this is why I think this is so difficult for us Christians to understand and accept this text by Jesus. Jesus did not mean that the other things are not necessary. In fact, he says in his word, for the Lord your God knows that you need them. So God knows and understands that you need a job, you need a business, you need investments, you need children, you need houses. But he says, seek first the kingdom and all these other things that you are so much bothered about shall be added unto you as well. And you know, Jesus was actually addressing disciples who were so worried, like you and I, about all what they had to lose as a result of following him. You know, people think that when you follow Jesus, people think when you're serving Jesus, you're losing. There is a bad perception that service to God is losing. And they were wondering how will they cope with the new normal of following Jesus without everyday bits and pieces that they used to depend on. And Jesus tackles this head on. And he sets their priorities right by saying, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. This text, my dear brothers and sisters, challenges what we know. Because as human beings, we know that some of these things are more important. In fact, Abraham Maslow, who studied the human behavior, concluded that we are driven by the same basic hierarchy needs. And he actually said, and I know you have learned this, that the most important thing for a human being is what? Is water. And then he says, food. And then clothes, housing, protection, security, preservation, self-actualization, and significance. He says, these are the most important things to a human being in that order. And to be honest, even most of us Christians, for information, when we are praying, we also pray in the same order. Just review your prayers for the last one week. The things that you have been praying for the most is water, food, clothes, housing and investment and plots, protection. Significance is towards the end. And by the way, for information, there are even people who follow Jesus and who are born again, so that he may also meet those needs in that order. But Jesus comes and says, hey, no. He inverts the whole hierarchy of needs by saying a very simple statement. Therefore, I tell you the truth. Do not worry about life. What you will eat or what you will drink. Or about your body. What you will wear or what you clothe. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? This totally contradicts the hierarchy of needs and its order. And what Jesus was trying to say here, and I want you to understand, is that the basic needs should never at any given time be the primary motivator for human action. 
Let us not work because we need this. In fact, someone told me sometime that the moment they stopped working for money, which of course is to get all these things, their lives or their life started being fulfilling. And you know the problem, the reason why sometimes we have, we may, we may have all these things by the way, we may have water in good supply, we may have food in good supply, we may have clothes, we may have houses, we may have protection and security, but that does not assure us fulfillment and peace. Because to God that is not the priority. And David knew this very well in Psalm 127. When he says, it is so useless to wake up so early in the morning and to sleep very late in the evening. Yet the Lord blesses those he wishes, even when they are asleep. Because I'm imagining those who are sleeping. You know, when you read the word of God, sometimes you may go back home and sleep. But don't go before I finish this sermon. What I'm trying to say is, there are some things that we value so much. There are some things that motivate human action which are very wrong. The only thing that should motivate your human action should be seeking the last thing that Maslow talks about, which is significance. And significance, dear brothers and sisters, is found when we seek the Lord. Hallelujah. This priority teaches us two important things. And that is a slide that I was talking about. If we can go back to that slide. Seeking first the kingdom of God it summarizes two priorities. And one is focusing on God and his righteousness. And number two, focusing on his kingdom. And I'll be talking about these two things briefly. Seeking first the righteousness of God is simply seeking holiness. It is being prepared, getting ready for heaven through holiness. But when you talk about the, the seeking the kingdom of God, it is getting others ready for heaven. Please note that. Seeking God's righteousness is you seeking or being prepared for heaven through holiness. But seeking the kingdom of God is getting others ready for heaven. That's a huge task. What is righteousness, if I may tackle the first one? Righteousness, by the way, righteousness, I understand righteousness is a legal word. And it means, it means being right being justified. And righteousness means being right with God. It is in God's desire that we may pursue righteousness. In fact, the word says in 2 Timothy 2, 22, flee also from youthful lust and pursue righteousness. Righteousness is not found easily. You've got to work for it. You've got to pursue it. And we can only obtain righteousness at the cross of Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3, 18, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. And what this sim simply means is that where Jesus' righteousness was given to us and our unrighteousness was laid on him. But while we are justified, brothers and sisters, at the cross, the work of sanctification, which is actually becoming more... Um, Holy in practice is usually an ongoing work in us. And there's a prayer that Paul made that I'd want to pray for us this morning in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. When he said, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You and I have a responsibility to pursue righteousness. Then Jesus said, seek first his kingdom. And I said, seeking his kingdom is getting others ready for heaven. Through evangelism and discipleship. Do we have the same excitement about God's kingdom? What drives us? 
what influences the decisions that we make. Our attitude to God's kingdom is seen most clearly in our attitude for evangelism. And if you see a church that fights and does not support evangelism, that is a church that has lost its priority. And I want to tell you that as a truth. And I'm, and I'm proud of this church, Sukari Parish, that even other people from outside this parish are desiring to come and benchmark with our evangelism, with our missions and evangelism work. Because we have honored Jesus by making the Great Commission a priority. And I want to tell you, where I come from, I recently visited my home church in up country and I was very disappointed. I, I felt we need to do something. When I was growing up, our church was full. Yeah, the church was a wooden church, old church somewhere, but it was so warm. Many people would come to church. Our mothers and our grandmothers and our grandfathers would rally in missions and conventions. East Africa revival missions and conventions were all over. Because the church knew its priority. Today the church has replaced priorities for projects. And I, I went there once uh, because I was invited. They were doing some, some constructions. And I don't, I'm not saying constructions are wrong. I, I get me right. Nanika Uliza, now by the way, I hall munajenga nialini. And my mother, who is an elder, told me, you know, wakati wa uchaguzi liopita, we realized that there was no tiling center around this place. And we found a need to put up a hall. Kwa sababu ya uchagu? Elections that come after. Yet the same parish, the minister has no place to live. In fact, I'm a Kombolewa uh, house somewhere in the center, in the mid, in the, in the mid east here clubs, yeah? kwa, kwa, kwa bars, yeah? uko, niko mchungaji wa wanaka. And I, ata vila nilikuwa nimekuwa invited, nikuwe mugeni, I had to review my, my contribution. <laughs> because sometimes priorities can, can go that wrong. And brothers and sisters, don't get me wrong, projects are good, and they're nice, but we have replaced them for the wrong priorities. I'm actually ashamed when I drive around and find that the church has started buying houses. Have you seen one from, from where you come from? Has ya kanisa? Has. And I really wonder, is it a committee that sat down and said, roho na nena sasa katika hii kamati ya women's guild tununue has. when the church replaced the priority for projects, we lost it. And when you go to those churches, I have never been to those churches, but I can tell you for sure, Hata Yokanisa Haina Haina half members. And that church maybe does not even do mission and evangelism. When the missionaries came, they were only doing two projects. Shule, na hospitali. Because those two things, shule, tunahitaji tufundisha watu, because you cannot preach to people who are not educated. They could not preach to people who are not educated. And education has transformed the world. They needed hospitals, because people would fall sick and needed medical care. But today, the other things that we're also bringing in the picture, which do not bring glory to God. For your information, it does not bring God glory when a church is running a house. Or they are literally taking people to heaven. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. This is not the great commission. It is the great omission. That we are practicing. And I want to tell you. The great commission is the only thing that Jesus Christ said. I will be with you. Till the end of age. It is the only thing that we get to partner with Jesus. 
Practicing the Great Commission is simply partnership with Christ. So when you talk about seeking the kingdom of God as a priority, we are saying that we are concerned about other people. That our ultimate goal is bringing people, bringing our colleagues, bringing our family members, bringing our friends to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. Jesus made a very remarkable statement as I conclude in John, 8, uh, John 6, 38. And he said, For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. This is Jesus Christ, a member of the Trinity. But even him, he did not come here to fulfill his desires. He came to do the will of, that, of God who sent him. And therefore it is important, brothers and sisters, that we review what to us is a priority. And when our decisions are centered on Matthew 6, 34, and 30, 33 and 34, I can tell you for sure, we shall be going to heaven and taking others to heaven. And the beauty of having this Matthew 6, 33 and 34 centered approach to life is that it invites us to make or to ask ourselves two simple questions whenever we are anxious about a decision we need to make. And I would invite us, anytime we are sitting down to make a decision in the work of God, to think about these two questions. How will this help me get ready to heaven? And how will this help others get to heaven? If you cannot answer those two questions, then whatever you're doing might not be a priority for Christ. Anything that is not a priority for Christ, he does not partner with us. But when we, we make everything in line with what God sees as a priority, and I said priority number one is putting God first. Priority number two is seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. When we do, the, we, when we do that, we we'll directly influence his kingdom to the right direction. And one of the fundamental decisions each one has to make, each one of us has to make today, is whether life is about us or about Christ. Whether we devote ourselves in advancing our own agenda or the agenda of God. So may God help us that we may be so passionate to push his agenda. And his agenda is advancing the kingdom. And do that as a priority. Otherwise, if your inner wear is on top of your clothes, you are, for lack of a better word, like insane. May God help us to wear our clothes appropriately. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. <laughs> Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you and we thank you. Many times, Lord, you have found us living the most important things. We have failed to put fast things first. And sometimes even as a church of Christ, the body of Christ, we have drifted backwards. Just like the people of Judah in the times of Nehemiah. And this morning, Lord, in a very strong way, you're reminding us, Lord, to look at our priorities. And you're reminding us, Lord, that our priorities first is to put you first and to seek righteousness and your kingdom. Forgive us, Lord, where we have done 
what you did not want us to do. And help us, God, to review and rethink and be that church that will be centered on you as a priority. Help those churches, God, that are struggling today because they lost their priority. And let everything that you do, God, bring you glory. As we ask ourselves, how does it make me get to heaven? And how does it make others get to heaven? So help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and God bless you.